Hello and welcome to the video. In this video, we'll go through step eight of the SAP UI5 walkthrough series uh, from the documentation. In this step, we will talk about translatable texts. Translatable text basically provides this feature in the application so that whatever text is being displayed to the user on the screen, that text gets displayed as per the local language of the user as per the system settings. This process is also called internationalization and it is achieved by using I18N files in SAP UI5 applications. What this means is that say for example, uh, there is some text which is to be displayed uh, to the user in the application view. And if the user has uh, English as the local language as per its system settings, that text will be displayed in English language to the user. And if there is another user who has the local language as German as per its system settings, uh, that same text will be displayed uh, to the other user in the German language. From the application changes a point of view in this step, there will be no uh, visual changes as such. We'll not be adding any new controls on the screen. Uh, but we will ensure that whatever text is being displayed to the user that gets displayed in uh, in the in the system's uh, local language. To achieve this, uh, there are some changes which we have to do. The first change is uh, we'll have to create an i18n dot properties file. This file will be created inside uh, a inside an i18n folder. It is a new folder we'll be creating, and this folder will be created inside our web app folder. This properties file, it basically contains the text which has to be displayed to the user. And it contains the text in the name value pair format for each element. Here you can see that there are two elements uh, which we have uh, created in this file. One is show hello button text and the other one is uh, hello message. And the corresponding values of these elements holds the text which has to be displayed to the user. We can also add any number of parameters to the text by adding numbers in curly brackets to them. Here you can see that uh, the hello message element, it has text which has parameter as zero within curly brackets. This means that we can provide a text value for this parameter dynamically, say from the controller of our application. In this application, we will have only one i18n.properties file, but in a real world scenario where our application need to cater to multiple different languages, we will have uh, multiple different uh, i18n.properties file and the naming convention of those i18n files would be something like what has been mentioned here, i18n underscore de dot properties for German language and say i18n underscore en dot properties for English language and so on and so forth. So for each language in which you want to translate your text in the application, you will have a separate i18n file and the naming convention is i18n underscore followed by the language suffix dot properties. Now coming to the controller file, what changes are needed for this? First of all, we need a resource model, which basically we have to load as a dependency in the sap.ui.define method. So here we are uh, loading the dependency of the resource model here. Then in the on init function, we are creating an instance for our i18n model. And how we are and how are we doing it is we are making use of the resource model and we are passing the bundle name in the parameter of this resource model. The bundle name here is the path to our i18 folder, then dot i18n. This is the path which we have to provide in the bundle name when we are creating an instance for our resource model. Once uh, we have created this resource model, using our bundle name, we assign this resource model. Basically we assign this i18n model to our view. 
here we are providing a name for our resource model which is i18n this text within double quotes this text can be anything but here we have it as i18n what sap ui5 does is that uh, according to the local language as per the system configuration of the user uh, sap ui5 will identify the correct path to the i18n file for the specific language and uh, it will create a model for that particular resource bundle say for example there there will be n number of i18 files for different different languages so whichever language is suitable for the application as per the uh, system settings sap ui5 will load the corresponding i18n file say for example if it is if the system has german language as the system settings then sap ui5 will automatically load the i18 n underscore de dot properties file for the bundle name of our resource model. In our application, what we will see is that when we press this button having say hello text, we will display a toast message to the user according to the description updated for our input control. So if the user provides an input SAP UI5 in the control, uh, the control description would be hello SAP UI5 and uh, upon click of the button say hello we will display a message to the user which will say hello SAP UI5. Therefore to there are some code changes which are needed in the on show hello callback function in our controller. What we are going to do is that uh, we will get the i18n model using this statement statement this dot get view dot get model i18n why we are using a named model here for our i18n model is because we have two models which are set on our view the first one is this json model which holds our data and the second one is our i18n model therefore to differentiate between the two models uh, when we are accessing them in the view or in the controller, we are providing a name for our i18n model. Now in the on show hello function, what we have to do is we have to first get the model, get the i18n model and we make use of this dot get resource bundle method to get the resource bundle which has been loaded for our application. You can say that it is basically a pointer to our i18n language file, which has been loaded for our application as per the current system language. Next, we are just getting whatever text the user has provided in the input control. We are getting that text using this statement, this dot get view dot get model here, because we have not provided any name inside the get model method. Therefore, it will get the instance of our JSON model, which holds the data. And here by using this get property method and providing the property name, which is slash recipient slash name, we are getting the value, whatever the user has provided in the input control. Now to prepare the message, which has to be shown to the user as a toast message, as a message toast, when the user clicks on the on the button uh, what we are doing here is that uh, we are making use of the o bundle variable which basically points to our i18n bundle in the local language and we use the get text method so we are so we are using o bundle dot get text and then we are providing the element here hello msg if we check our i18n file hello msg is an element in our i18n file which has a corresponding text value. In this text value, you can see there is a parameter here which is mentioned as zero inside curly braces. In this statement, we provide the value of the parameter which has been maintained in our i18n file. This will basically concatenate the recipient name with the 
static hello text in our hello message element. If you see here, we can provide n number of different parameters after hello, like curly, curly braces 0, curly braces 1, curly braces 2. If we have to provide more text dynamically from the controller, and uh, we can use this get text method and uh, provide an array of different different text which needs to be used for this particular element hello message. In this case, we are passing only one value which is our recipient name to the parameter and it gets concatenated with the static text hello. Now once our S message is ready, we just show that message to the user in a message toast. Now coming to the app.view.xml file, what changes are needed in this file? We know that we are showing a text on our button and that text also should basically come from the i18 file, which is our translatable text file. Therefore, whenever we are providing a text for the button control, we will take that we will read that text from our i18n file. And this is the method to do that. i18n here refers to the model name, which has been assigned to our i18n model. This name we have assigned in our controller file in the on init method. This is that i18n name, which we are referring to in the view. So in order to access an element from the i18n properties file, uh, we provide the name of the model i18n and, and then we give this greater than symbol followed by the element name in the i18n file. So the element name show hello button text has the text say hello written here. Therefore, the text of the button will be displayed as say hello. Basically, we are making use of data binding in order to access the i18n properties file and to get the corresponding text for our view. Now let us run the application and uh, see what changes are displayed to the user. We have uh, the application already downloaded and opened in Visual Studio Code. In order to run the application, we have our manifest.json file and we have made some changes uh, in the ui5.yml file. I have already run npm install command. Now I will run ui5 serve command. We click on index.html file. And we see the application running on the screen. Now, as a user, we can provide any other text in the input control. And the same text get, gets updated in the description. Now, when we click on say hello, hello SAP UI5 message toast is displayed to the user. In this example, because we are displaying the text in English and uh, my system setting configuration is also in English language. So we will not be able to uh, see the difference that how i18n file caters to different languages as per uh, different system settings. But there is one hack which we can try to do here in the application and uh, so that we can understand the impact of the i18n files in our application. What I'm going to do is I'll stop the application and I will rename this i18n properties file to i18n underscore de. So what this so what this tells to the SAP UI5 framework is that this particular file is to be loaded when 
the system settings is for the German language for the user. Now to set the system settings for German language for uh, my system, what I can do is I can pass this SAP hyphen UI hyphen language is equals to DE parameter in the URL. If we pass this parameter value as DE, SAP UI5 will treat our system settings for German language. Now I will start the application again. And we'll refresh this page. Now you can see the difference, what we are seeing on the screen, because we have only i18n underscore de dot properties file in our application. Okay. And currently my application is running in English language and it is not able to find an i18 dot an i18n properties file in my folder structure. Therefore, it is just displaying the text without making use of this i18n file. And the text which you are seeing here show hello button text. is basically coming directly from what we have mentioned here and it is not coming from our i18n file because this i18n file is for German language. Now if I pass the URL parameter with SAP UI language is equals to DE. So we are telling the system that we have to see the text in the German language. Now our i18n underscore de dot properties file is coming into picture and we can see the text here, which is coming from our i18n underscore de dot properties file. One important thing to note here is that i18n dot properties file is the default file or is the default fallback file in any SAP UI5 application. So if the SAP UI5 framework doesn't find a language specific file in inside the i18n folder, it will always fall back on the default i18n dot properties file, which should always be there. But in our case, in this case, what I have done is that I have renamed my i18 n dot properties file to i18n underscore de dot properties file. Therefore, there is no default fallback uh, i18n dot properties file available. And if I try to run this application in English language, which is my default setting in my browser and my system, the SAP UI5 framework is not able to find the fallback file and hence it is not displaying any text from the i18n and hence it is not able to translate any of the text which is being shown to the user. I hope this concept is clear. If there are any questions to be asked, you can please mention those in the comment section. So this is what I wanted to cover in this video. Let me know if this video was helpful. In the next section, in the next video, we will cover step number nine, which is component configuration. Thank you for watching the video and have a nice day.